I'll give you really uh, what I have seen during my trip to Xinjiang, some impressions uh, that I have gathered that I would like to share with you. I was in uh, uh, Xinjiang only a couple of months ago in uh, May. And um, as you know, I normally live in China when I am not in uh, Italy. My position now is uh, in between, uh, let's say, uh, the government layer and the academic think tank layer. So my goal uh, now is to try to bring uh, to the table of uh, policymakers uh, in Italy, of course, my country, in Europe and around the world, uh, all the analysis, uh, studies, uh, ideas uh, to improve uh, uh, economic uh, and social uh, situations uh, in, uh, in around uh, the world really so i'm acting uh, i'm trying to act as a linkage between the fact that are in a way uh, the, the core essence of uh, research and think tanks and universities academics uh, with the politics that sometimes tend to either misunderstand or misread facts so that uh, policymakers can act uh, on the basis of uh, data not on the basis of uh, uh, more random uh, uh, input. And so one thing that I've done over the last uh, two months uh, since I've uh, been back from Xinjiang, uh, back to Italy, is exactly this, uh, talking, trying to uh, describe to the public opinion, to the media, to policymakers, to members of the government and companies, uh, what is that I've seen in uh, Xinjiang. And what I've seen uh, is indeed very different uh, from what uh, uh, they, they thought uh, from what the general understanding is in the Western uh, societies about what is happening there. My point uh, uh, is that uh, people were doubting that I was even in Xinjiang. They were uh, arguing that probably I was even, uh, uh, I was faking my presence there. So I had to show some uh, live uh, video from the market uh, around the areas to actually show that I was uh, there. So there was a really, I think this is a, it's not a joke. It's a, a really psychological barrier. Some uh, uh, journalists were doubting my very presence there. I would jump into a taxi uh, in Wilmujo, in Tulufan, or in other cities uh, and try to uh, talk with the, with the local people. And they were even doubting, saying, no, Michael, you are not in Xinjiang, you're in Rome. You're just pretending. Then I went on to try to learn. I even said thank you, Rachmet, in the Uyghur language to show that it didn't work. They were just uh, thinking I was in Rome, <laughs> faking to be uh, in uh, uh, Wurumqi. And so this is uh, really the perception. We have a psychological uh, barrier. Uh, you know, it's very difficult. To, it's easier. I think there's a sentence, I don't know who, who said that. Uh, it's very easy to cheat people than to persuade them that they've been cheated. And this is really the stage where we are at now. Uh, my trip to Xinjiang was made up of two parts. So I give you the background so you understand the, the facts again that I like. Uh, the, there was of course a few days where I was uh, in the company of uh, uh, local uh, members of the uh, official community that helped me uh, introduce uh, to the people that I, I had asked to meet. So I met uh, with, uh, uh, you know, some uh, local academics. I met uh, with uh, uh, Iman in the mosque. I went to some of the uh, schools of uh, Islamic uh, culture. Uh, I did go to see uh, companies producing uh, uh, tractors for the harvest of cotton. I went to the cotton fields. Uh, and this was, let's say, the official part. The, you know, people were saying, oh, Michele, that doesn't matter, you were taken by the local government and they will show you what they wanted. And this is not true because I asked what I wanted to see. But the important thing is that then in the second part of, the, of my trip, I did what I normally do around China, get on a train by myself and traveled around the region uh, completely uh, free. Uh, to go and do whatever I want, just like I do in, uh, in Shanghai or in, in any other part of China. And I noticed uh, the dissonance between uh, the narrative and the reality. My, again, I, I do economics, uh, so I don't deal uh, with the human rights. But of course, when I deal with economics, I look at the society. And I say my 
belief uh, is that uh, the discussion on uh, genocide is completely uh, not true. Uh, it is, uh, in my view, again, take it as an input, not as an output. This is not a, a judgment. It's a data that I offer to the discussion. Just like when we, when we do a discussion in courts, people bring evidence and it's the judges that make up a decision. My evidence is that uh, it is, in my view, as, a, as, an, as an analyst, uh, almost mathematically impossible that the claims of one to three million people being subject to forced labor or, or, or anything that it's impossible that these three million people experience would not uh, transmit into the society, uh, into the outside of these alleged camps. We have uh, in Xinjiang about 12 and a half million ethnic Uyghurs. So if we had the really three million or even one million people suffering from uh, uh, those uh, uh, accusations. There will be mothers, uh, children, uh, parents, uh, relatives of these people that uh, in the normal day life uh, would uh, uh, know about those. And when I was uh, walking and uh, traveling around, I saw nothing that would indicate uh, that uh, family would have uh, the sons, the daughters uh, in prison somewhere else. So th this was absolutely not the, not the atmosphere that uh, you would breathe when you walk in the streets there. It's a completely normal uh, situation. Uh, there is, uh, in a way, um, lifestyle similar to other parts of China. I have seen a lot of uh, positive uh, um, measures by the Chinese government to stimulate the economy. Uh, I went to see some uh, uh, production of uh, nan bread, which is the local uh, uh, one of the local products. Uh, so the traditional local product mixed uh, with new technology, with live streaming, so that uh, the market for this uh, nan bread that used to be limited to the local region actually was reaching the rest of China thanks to a mix exactly of tradition, making the bread, the nan bread, with the live streaming uh, online sales. And so I did meet. Uh, uh, you know, young young ladies and young boys that uh, were making uh, up to even 20,000 renminbi per month, which is a lot of money, even in Shanghai, uh, let alone in the western part of China, where the average GDP is, of course, lower, thanks to this uh, technology. Uh, there was, uh, of course, the industry of tourism, even wineries in uh, Tupan uh, competing with Italian wine. So we are trying to find uh, some way to cooperate. Uh, maybe there is also possibility to exchange knowledge on production. The market is uh, expanding. So I did see, uh, you know, I'm probably the only member of a, a European or Western government or former member that has been in Xinjiang in the last uh, few months. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, I do see a situation which is pretty much uh, normal and similar to the rest of China. There, there is one thing that uh, we need to see, and this is, uh, again, uh, what I've perceived. I think the Chinese government, uh, and we don't have, we can judge it or not. Uh, my view is that they did right. Uh, I think uh, what they did is they were heavy handed against the terrorism. Uh, that may be true. And I, it's something that, by the way, I would support. Uh, China would not accept any separatist or let alone any terrorist uh, activity. Terrorist activity that uh, I tell you are not really well known in the West. Very few people know about the Kunming attack, the, the Wulumuch attack, and so on. You know, we're talking about sometimes a uh, few, sometimes even um, tens and even up to uh, hundreds of people died in a uh, in single attack. So this anti-terrorist uh, battle, I think a, a choice uh, of China not to give too much uh, uh, public media exposure, not to incite other people to imitate and follow, very different from the approach that we have here in the West. Every time we have a problem, the whole media covers it. And that it's, of course, good to inform people, but of course, uh, has the side effect to uh, entice uh, uh, other people to, to imitate or emulate uh, the, the so-called heroes. Of course, uh, China may have a different approach, so that uh, 
message did not get across to the West. The, we people in the West uh, were, are not really aware of the uh, serious terrorist attack that China had suffered. So I think China did two things. A, did not uh, talk too much about it, uh, not to create further problem, and two, go heavy in to try to stop it. And you know, who would not agree that this is a good idea? Um, so all the problems that people discuss about, and again, in my view, there is completely no uh, targeted uh, problem with the one specific ethnic or even religious minority. Uh, the fact that uh, there have been uh, some uh, problem with terrorism in the region of Xinjiang with this part of the Uyghur community is not because uh, they were of a certain ethnic, of a certain religion. It just happens that they were on a, and we know very well, we have friends from other countries bordering China, troubles always happen at the border uh, of countries. So uh, I am actually worried that we need to keep an eye on the southwestern border of China, uh, because this is where uh, people who want to, uh, let's say, stir up turmoil, it's easier to uh, go along uh, uh, the borders. Uh, but uh, when I've asked, uh, this is the key point, when I've asked why would ever the Chinese government have anything to do against uh, the Uyghur minority? Uh, why is it that there are 56, uh, um, 55 minorities, uh, they all live uh, happily? Why would, why, would, why would it be that there is a problem only with one uh, uh, minority. Why is it that there should be a problem only with one uh, of the many provinces in China? Uh, what would be, you know, when we uh, discuss again trials, we need to have a, a motive for a, a certain activity. And no one has ever really been able to tell me why would China be doing something against, uh, against targeting a specific minority, a specific ethnic. Uh, that answer, that question really remain uh, unanswered. And so in a way that makes any, uh, let's say, accusation completely uh, unfounded uh, from a logical point of view. There is really no reason why China would do, would do, would do that. Um, I want to really uh, close here and I show you really the video that I was uh, uh, chosen uh, in a way better than uh, uh, words, what I have really uh, seen and what I really uh, witnessed uh, by myself. Tell me if you hear it also. Make it a uh, full screen, please. Can you hear it? Yes. yes.
So, uh, you know, this tries to give you an idea that uh, I, I'm one of these analysts that like to, you know, get the hands dirty, uh, dirty with sand, uh, dirty with uh, really doing the things that we try to do. You know, we meet with uh, uh, the country uh, top leaders, but also with, uh, with the farmers to really understand the level of society. And this is really the way the way I work. So in this two minutes video, I really wanted to convey to the audience uh, this mix. Uh, first, uh, that I did the things uh, traveling uh, independently and uh, so many aspects of society and also give the idea, we always say Xinjiang shi ge hao di fan. This is true. Uh, Shang, uh, Xinjiang is really a very, very nice area. And I think there's lots of potential for tourism. And uh, I actually am trying to build a closer cooperation for renewable energies. Uh, we have seen and I witness uh, wind farms that extend for kilometers. Uh, we know that uh, we are moving to uh, solar energy. We have the Green New Deal here in Europe. Uh, in uh, Just recently, not in Xinjiang, but in Xinhai, China opened up a 2.2 gigawatt factory of uh, solar. Uh, we have also concentrated solar panels. So, anyway, these are, this is an area that uh, has a great uh, economic uh, potential, and it's an economic potential which is in line with what the West uh, wants to do, which is decarbonize, uh, go green, do more tourism, more ecotourism, and uh, uh, give value to the local product, maybe uh, not just natural resources, but also uh, local agricultural and the food uh, product. So. I hope I gave you a mixed, uh, you know, uh, view of uh, not mixed in the meaning of uh, many angles view of the things I've seen. Uh, putting my hat as an economist, my hat as a traveler, and really uh, talking to uh, you saw in the images uh, to average uh, person on the street uh, that confirms uh, what I said at the beginning. This is not uh, a region where people live uh, under any uh, threat. Thank you very much.